Hi guys, Jake and MJ, back again for more live reactions to Kishu Ryu Sentai Ryu Soldier. Chop chop. Well, our uh, fan server likes to keep us on our toes. It's just a little bit. Um, yeah, we're doing it early in the morning again for the first time in a while. Yeah, because this is the first time we're doing it early in the morning, not because of our own schedule. Yeah, it was just, um, we couldn't, uh, we couldn't find a subtitle copy until, uh, last night, and by the time we found it, it was too late. Too late last night, yeah. So, uh, we're doing it early in the morning again, so this will be up later, later today. Happy Wednesday. It's hey. actually Wednesday. Actually Wednesday. Um. It's 5.30 in the morning on Wednesday. Uh, as far as... You know, Power Rangers news, not too much going on right now. We are pretty solidly in the hiatus. Um, the only thing that's kind of surprising is that we're not seeing um, any reruns on Saturday right now. Oh, really? Yeah, it's it's just preempted uh, on Saturdays at the moment. What with? Random thing. Mostly oh, okay. Spongebob. Yeah. But, uh, you know, usually we'll have the rerun Person Saturday mornings. Uh, well... Saturday, it used to be Saturday at noon, uh, but no, uh, but no reruns of Beast Morpher episodes on Saturdays right now. They still have the Sunday morning reruns, um, but at the very least, we're not seeing anything for May or the first week of June at the moment. Mm. Um, so there's some speculation there may have been just some renegotiations on the deal when Hasbro took over, um, and apparently this is not. Yeah, apparently this is not that unusual for their other shows, but it is a little strange for Power Rangers compared to the last eight years. Fair enough. Um, and as far as Power Reviews, we have been working on filming 88, um, so that's coming along. Uh, fingers crossed, hopefully should be good to go for next month. Um, not exactly sure when next month, but it, it is looking pretty good for June, and then I'm going to try and get... Uh, 89 and 90 out before the end of the summer, if I can, in sort of a one-two punch. Yeah. Um, it's going to be tricky. Um, the summer is going to be really... i got to focus in on the... Um, filming. On the filming. And my, my job search is, is still ongoing at the moment, so we'll see what happens. Uh, as far as what I will be doing for work in the fall, should be should be teaching. <laughs> we got to figure out where, though. So, um, so yeah, that's what's going on in the world of Power Rangers, Power Reviews, and us in general. So, I think, without any further ado, we should dive right in to, to episode 9 of, of Kishu Ryu Sentai Ryu, Ryu Soldier, Soldier, The Strange Treasure, Treasure Chest. <laughs> hey, here we go, jumping right in. Tatsui has a banana. banana. But is her father about to steal it new, or is he going to peel it and put it back in her? He is. Oh, yeah, that's adorable. They're training with, uh, with, with the mannequin that has an apple head. Apparently, Moto's always overthinking. She says it's their train. Y'all kind of stuck. Yeah. Okay, well, game. Real life game. Is that... ARG. Oh, okay. Sounds like Whoa. that. Whoa, that guy is not doing good. What's going on here? Shop's gotten all messed up. Uh, it's a clown. Oh, his brother came here too. Hey, Toa. They're still very uh, competitive, sort of. Okay, sure, why not? I, I'm going to assume that everybody surrounding them just, just, just thinks that these four are really intriguing. I'm going to assume that that's a game. 
Uh, that'd be weird. Okay, not a gangway. <laughs> Drew a tongue? Yes. That's too easy. Whoa, it's, uh... You probably don't want to touch that. Hey, it's a monster chest. That's fun. Wow. That was quick. Like I said. There we go. That's Okay, Despite the treasure chest taking three seconds to find, they were literally the last ones to find it. Oh, hey, money. Oh, that's nice. It contains your greatest desire, and that is a businessman. That's a lot of money. <laughs> that's pretty realistic. Okay, so there are more treasure chests. Wow. Uh, I think it's just a Lotus Eater machine. Yeah. Yeah, it is. 
just really ridiculous. I mean, they are essentially trash mobs. Yeah. But you've heard that when I was uh, playing games with my guild. Oh. Hey, he still wants to see more of the world. Yeah. That's, that's a nice follow through on the setup. You get a fly, apparently. Okay, sure, why not? Oh, ow. Unfortunate choice of dreams, apparently. There's not much to this world. And of course, Ko doesn't realize that's not how the world works. He's like, wait, but I have a wall. So. Yeah, of course there's some. You. Everyone is ignoring Melta, going. This is weird. No one seems to be weirded. Everyone's ignoring Melta, going. You're probably over just thinking, just overthinking. You're overthinking at Melta. We just got, you know, eaten by a treasure chest. No, we just went back. Ooh. I like the colorful trees. Yeah. To find something in the middle. Okay. No, no, I was just trying to convey moral of the week. I didn't mean to be offended. Oh, I'm sorry, dude. So I'm assuming. Okay, so it's wise we were Kirion. There we go. I suspected the clown was Kirion, uh, and the witch would be wise. We've only got one face eat. Then stop putting it on. Pink is getting sick. Probably from eating too oh, she's much. gonna be huge. She's just gonna be huge. They're gonna turn her into a. Man, he's, he's got his master. <laughs> Sorry, it's is this a vision or is this a dream? The beginning of a uh, vision of Escaplone? Oh, okay. He doesn't want to lose his friends. Hey, Wazoo. 
Okay, that's, that's kind of great. He's got a random umbrella. Look at me. I'm Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins, y'all. Oh, it is created by a Minosaur. So the treasure chest is the Minosaur. Interesting. <laughs> then Melto was right. This is a trap. What was your first hint? Was the bubble not enough of a hit? Seriously. <laughs> the trap sprung in three seconds, and it's taken you half the runtime to realize it's a trap? Enjoy life until you die. Classic Lotus in the game. Yeah. Oh dear. Once you've already defeated. Yep. We got the Kraken and the uh, uh, Cerberus. But they seem a little easier this time. And now they're back. There. What? That is oddly specific knowledge for you to have. Also... Okay. It's just nine skin rhyme. What's that for? Mob, Lord Hodge, uh, my favorite trial, uh, and Hodge Scrolls Online. Oh, okay. Also, I know there's the twins. You gotta take them out the same, or well, roughly at the same time. They come back. That's why you'll hear things like lighting tracks only on Rich Nine, because at that point, Rich Nine is a danger dying. What, what is happening? Uh, he is doing which, them in one spot. Wait, so which soul? Which soul? Extend soul. No, before the extend extend soul. Sproing? The sproing? No, that he just sproing with the extend soul. That's a new use of the extend stroke. I almost looked at that. Instead of it wrapping people up, it went straight through them. Well, the oh well, yeah, that. But I'm referring to what was that first? Yes, soul he was an using? illusion. Oh well, yeah, it's a weird illusion. He did open a chest. Same dust from the shop. What? Why did they need the box to make the food on? They started making sudons for objects instead of people. Doesn't make any sense. I don't see. You build experience, you get stronger. He is absolutely stuck in an MMO right now. A little bit. That's enough you'll put on weight. Really? Slumber soul? Are you going to sleep? The Minosaurs or? I think Toa. 99 Toa.
throw out in the dirt for a few moments here. It's interesting that just these two Mitosaurus over and over again. Oh, that's not great. Oh, he still says the here, here. That's cute. Always away. No. Oh. oh, dear. Everyone in here is feeling the dinosaur. That's interesting. This mind sort of works off of very, very different, different rules overall. Do not split up. Do not split the party. Well, okay. But he's telling you what to act. It's like sometimes we need sometimes we need to act. Yeah, and I'm telling you what to do. You trust okay. my plan, and I will trust the two of you to be reliable. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Slashy, slashy. Smashy, smashy. was, oh, we have to destroy this box with emotions. Like, what? He 
見てたオプラバンクスうん宝箱にこれがあったということはあのマスターブルーは本当に
So we're now breaking the Minnesota rules in a very interesting way. Yeah, apparently they're apparently they can work with objects, but the objects apparently can't. The object Minnesota's can't be destroyed unless you destroy the object. I don't know why they work under that rule. I mean, I don't know that that is the rule. I'm thinking that maybe in this case it was simply easier because it's an object. Well, here's the thing though. You, you we saw Melto uh, strike through the chest and it didn't do anything. That's true. So apparently destroying the object was the only d way to destroy an object mi minosaur, which is a strange variation. Yeah. Oliver! Ollie, Ollie, stop chewing on that. Come on. Ollie! Ollie. Stop that. Don't chew He's chewing on my Amazon wardrobe bag. That's gotta go back! Um... Also, uh... Ko is still, uh, walking bag of hammers. Um... He's... I... I didn't know the sky had a wall! Ko! How did in... none of them realize they were inside the treasure chest? I mean, like after being physically sucked into the treasure chest. Like it had eyes and a mouth and it ate you. <laughs> and then it took you half the episode to be like, wait. Maybe this is a trap. What? What is your perception of the world? I mean like as soon as you started seeing things like the businessman with his stacks of money and the girls with all their limited edition makeup it should have been pretty apparent to you that this was not a competition, since everyone found a chest almost immediately. It... It was... Uh, everybody seemed to lack any level of skepticism, with the exception of Melto, just so that Melto could be the I mean, I understand the why story. the civilians all fell for it. It's a Minosaur. Right. We can say magic. But I don't understand why, except for Melto... All the Kishi re like I would have all the real soldiers fell I mean, for it. This I expect from Ko. This I do not expect from Asuna. Well, I mean, uh, apparently, apparently they're they're just not a bright bunch. Apparently, Melto and Bamba are, uh, as we established in the previous episode, they're the only ones with any deductive reasoning. Yeah. Uh, because they were the only ones able to figure out the uh, the that. Um, Cardana wasn't was wasn't on the up and up. Right. Or Cardana and Vita. Um, um and uh, and then this this week they're the only ones who are figuring it out anything, and I don't even know how did Bamba find that box. Where was he that he found? These... Oh no no no! I, that that I actually remember. Where where how did he get that? Where was he? Remember the dude was crawling out of the antiques shop. Yeah. And so he helped the guy at the antique shop. Right. And the and guy said, what would they want with that old piece of junk? Right. So he found out that it was stolen. Right. So he was chasing the box. Chasing how? I don't know. Camera it, footage? Yeah, see, that's, that's, that's my, that's okay, my point. Okay, okay. How did he find that box? It's like... He, he he was all of a sudden in this warehouse, and it's like, well, how do you know... How do you look, know to come here? To come here. What? Where are you now? I, I, I feel almost like there was a missing scene or something, but I don't, I don't think we missed anything. I, he just showed up at this warehouse where the box was, and there were trying to soldiers there. Um, I'm not sure how he found them. I don't know if I missed something. That was a little weird. Um, a little, yeah. Also, a lot, a little, a lot. It was weird. Also, how did he know where the did did he go home and then find out the others were at a thing and then realize that they might be trapped because they always are? And, well, it's entirely possible he knew where his brother was going. I guess so. Yeah, that's true. He would have known where Toa was. Um. So when he found out that the Minosaurs had uh, abducted a box. Yeah. 
oh yeah, my brother was going to a weird thing with treasure chests, and I can't raise him on my wrist phone. I, I, I guess so. Because I'm yeah, sure that's, at some that's, point that's you would have been all like, hey. That's fair. Toa, we got work. Toa, Toa. <laughs> Actually, have they been using their morphers as communication devices so far? I mean, they probably can, but I don't think they have so far. All right, then he's calling to his cell phone and he's not answering. Well, I don't think they have cell phones. He didn't make their agreed-upon meetup? I don't know. Uh, like, it, it, the most likely thing is tried, tried to call on the warfare and didn't, but it just occurred to me that... We haven't seen that. We haven't established any... Uh, I don't think we've established any form of long t of long-range communications between the real soldiers. That's a good point. Um... Or at least not not that I not not that I'm recalling at the moment, uh, which is a little odd. Someone's got a mat in his side. Uh, yeah, give him a brush. Yeah, right here, right there. Um, I mean, for the most part, the episode was you know fine little filler, but it was just like, guys, y you're, you're, you're in a trap. You're in a trap. Like it, the trap sprung. You saw the trap spring. You watched everyone. You watched everyone else in the trap with you. And you're like, oh. Wait, could this be a trap? Yeah, it's a trap. I didn't know the sky had a wolf. Uh, that, that w okay, the sky, the sky having limits was, was actually funny, because Ko is that dumb. Ko is a bag of hammers. Um, absolutely a bag of hammers. But, uh, the, the Reed soldiers are not a bright bunch. No, they are not. Melto and Bamba are apparently the only ones with any deductive reasoning. Yep. Um, and, and I guess just the way that that world works is once you start indulging, you can't stop. Although... It would appear so, because they're like, we only got one face each, and they were wearing way too so like much then, makeup. Then stop putting on the makeup. Just just stop. You, you don't need to keep put. You have a lifetime supply of makeup. You don't need to put it all on at once. That's not how makeup works. That, um, that's a real thing, though, right now. Like, um... Putting just just going through a lifetime supply of makeup in a day. No, uh, limited edition uh, right. makeups are like a real big thing right now. Uh, I guess so. Uh, like they're they um, various and sundry like uh, companies work with celebrities to be all like this is my palette, yeah. and these are their different colors or whatever, and like yeah, it's a whole thing. There was a whole thing a while ago where somebody's like. Signature palettes got stolen from their warehouse and resold at Marshalls. Yeah. And everybody was up in arms because how did Marshalls come into possession of stolen goods? I, I, I guess my the the main thing when it came to the suspicion level of the trap, I, I get it that a lot of times, you know, okay, everyone gets trapped in a world and they're just their minds are swayed by that by that world except for maybe the one who is inherently suspicious. I can roll with that trope. But you got eaten by a treasure chest with teeth. That's the that's the part where I'm like, okay, nothing about this is suspicious to anyone here that you got eaten by a treasure chest with teeth. Also... Well, honestly, I feel like the civilians may have not even remembered that part. I don't know. Maybe, maybe no, I guess nobody remembered that part. Because, I mean, it was weird that when you get eaten by a magic box, there's no particular rules as to whether or not you remember that moment. But it, the problem with, with that uh, from a narrative perspective is you need to address that. It needs to be a, wait, what just happened? What were we doing? Like, like have that moment of how we got here. Where or or have well, that moment of we've always been to, here. Um, more willing to attribute that sort of thing to the civilians than I am to the Ryu soldiers who we were with the whole time and never addressed it. Yeah. Like okay, like, maybe the civilians don't remember getting eaten by a box. They think they're on the treasure chest hunt right now. 
We were soldiers. We just watched them get eaten by the box. Also, um, like, you were inside. Now you're outside. That's a suspicious thing when, you know, all of a sudden the, the, the building you were in is not where you are. That's... Yeah, the civilians are all under the sway of the Lotus Eater machine. And I guess they were, I guess the real soldiers were too, it's just, address it, just, just a little, just a little bit. Be like, uh, how we get here? Does anyone remember? Ah, oh, I don't remember. Oh, okay. Oh, look. This, what's interesting is that Wise Little Witch said that it would grant them their greatest desire. Yeah. And Melto did apparently open a box, and yeah. that is where Blue came from, but he said, I didn't wish for Master Blue. So it's really not r running off of what you were thinking of at that time. Yeah. It's actually running off your innermost desire. Fair enough. Which makes Asuna's desire for barbecue a little bit weird. Yeah. Um, also... Actually, if, as far as I understand, actually, what she was eating would be what in Japan they would call hibachi. Fair enough. Um, because... What we call hibachi is not actually hibachi. I think it's teppanyaki. Okay. Or but, something like that. Um, another thing that was odd was you need to destroy them simultaneously for this to work. Why? Also, why? Where they come from? Why? Why? Like, any any reasoning behind that rule would... I'm going to just say that I think a gamer wrote this episode, because that is definitely a game mechanic, and Toa was spouting game... Like, yeah, yeah, he's got, I'm, I'm going to grind out some trash mobs! Yeah, that was... So like, okay, Toa, you're clearly just playing a lot of, uh, a lot of online games. Yeah, I'm just... I'm just it, it was just one of those things where... Mm, Mechanics-wise, I don't know why it was a thing. Because there was no... Oops. It was buzzing. Oh, okay. Because uh, there was no real reason for that. Or any reason for Master Blue to know that, whatever his deal was. Well, I'm thinking the deal with Master Blue was that what... What uh, Melto most wanted was for his master to to give him a clear answer. I guess. Like, he wants he, he wants the, to know what the correct answer is. He wants to get it right, and he wants his master to give it to him. So he came up with the idea that there would be two monsters who you need to destroy simultaneously, and then his master would tell them you need to destroy them simultaneously? Subconsciously he came up with that, yes. That is oddly specific. It doesn't have to be that. What I'm saying is, is that he imagined I'm, I, himself a situation for his master to give him the solution to. I, I'm just saying it's it's an oddly specific uh, application of that desire. Yes. Also, why Again, why did Toa why did Toa's follow the same rules? That's a good yeah. question. And There's then, no reason for Toa's ones to follow the same rules. And then apparently these. And it was also the same two Minosaurs in both cases, which again yeah. was like, okay, I, why, why are we... We just gotta get some extra budget out of these suits, because they were expensive. I, it's like, okay, I could, we're resurrecting all Minosaurs, but we're resurrecting the same two twice. Wait, are these the only ones that, no, no. Here, here was definitely Tank Joe's era. Yeah. I was gonna wonder if they yeah, were neither wise of them, wolves. Neither of them were wise wolves. Wise wolves only had the uh, the cockatrice so far, and neither of them were the cockatrice. So, I don't know what the deal was with that. Um, also, um, Cerberus had a double to begin with, so the fact that he just got paired up with a different one made it extra they weird. They really like that suit. Well, I mean, obviously... Pairing him up with another him would require one yeah. more. They, they would have required an post. actual second suit. Yeah. Because I'm assuming there was only one suit. Mm -hmm. um, 
or a lot of post production, like what happens when you decide to put two of me on screen at the same time. Yeah, which is which is frustrating. Which you're not gonna want to do with the Sentai battle. Yeah, if you can avoid it. Um. Yeah, Ryu Seltzer just continues to to just make weird story choices. Um, like, it's cute and fun, but it's, like, a lot of stuff is falling apart upon, like, any real... Any degree of scrutiny. Yeah. And the whole thing comes crumbling down. Which is, which is unfortunate. I, like, I want, I want to like the show and I want it to be doing like, well. We... It's, it's fun enough, but it's, it's just a lot of weird. Um... Everything seems to rely on rules that you just kind of make up as you go along and get resolved in ways that there's not really a, a rhyme or reason to. Um, never need a reason, never need a rhyme. And then a step in time. So, um, it's, it's just like, oh, oh, this is a Medusa Minosaur show. I know what we need to do. Destroy the road. Stro throw all the pieces in her face, then undestroy the road, which will now stick to her face. And it's like, what? Have you considered a mirror? Like, there, there are so many. That's usually how you do it. They keep having these really weird roundabout ways of destroying the Maya swords. Yeah, those are those make for interesting battles, but there's the the logic behind them is just so weird. They are frequently violating, well, I'm not sure that it counts as Occam's razor, you know, where the most simple answer is probably the mm -hmm. answer, but they're frequently violating whatever the Occam's razor equivalent is of solving problems by using the most complicated method instead of the simplest method to achieve their ends. I mean, even, even when we... Next time, I expect them to build a Rube Goldberg machine. I mean, even when we go back to the second episode with the with the unicorn dinosaur, like they they had this whole convoluted thing to get it to inhale stink gas. Yep. And it's like, why? I'm not sure why you're so, you know, why you're so focused on the stink gas. I mean, I, that one at least they had tried to use it on on it earlier, and he he had fled, but. They just keep finding these really weird ways of addressing the Minosaur. We, last week we had singing for really no Bad discernible. Singing. Bad singing. for on really, really flimsy because logic. Because Fita's allergic to it, which Weisel decided to imitate, even though nobody except the person who already knew that Fita was not Fita would have known. And it, it also it didn't really do anything to the Minosaur as far as we could tell. No. And now we have a mi and then we had a Minosaur that could be made from an object, but couldn't be destroyed physically, and so they had to destroy the object. And that object had negative emotions. Which, like, just the like fact... if the object has emotions, what are the ethical ramifications of destroying it? Also, somebody, like, invested time and effort into making that little model, and they just destroyed it, like, boom. Well, apparently, no but, one's opened it in a very long time. Which is still, which is also, which is well, I sadness. guess, it, yeah. It's just a lot of weird there. The The object had a sadness. It wasn't a sadness that was imbued into the object by anyone. The object had its own sadness of not being opened. And so they rectified that by, by just destroying, destroying the box. it. It's like that. Now the box is very sad. You made me feel bad for the box immediately before Dead. destroying it. Why? Why did you do that? Why did you make me feel bad for a box? And then destroy. And then immediately destroy it. That was some weird, like emotional cognitive dissonance going on there. What? Uh. I feel like we're being rough on Rhea Soldier, but at the same time, I'm like... I don't know what's happening. It's weird storytelling, man. It's really weird storytelling. Um, and 
Well, apparently the people, the people, who, the writers who they brought in for Ryu Soldier, I read somewhere, um, uh, are not traditional Sentai writers. They wanted to get in some fresh blood, and so they brought in some uh, J-drama writers who, I, I don't know if they just don't have the world-building logic. I'm not sure what they've worked on before this, but I, I, it, I, it's not... Really, J drama writers just don't think that Sentai is like remotely serious, so they're goofing off. I don't know. Um, like I know this season is is they're trying to sort of um, salvage their ratings and toy sales is is the big thing right now. So they're like, let's bring in some new blood and let's use our most popular gimmick and let's use everything. From our last three seasons that had this popular gimmick, and hopefully this will make it popular again. And I, I don't know how kids are responding to it. Hopefully they're enjoying it. I mean, the, kids are going to be a little less bothered by this than we will. Yeah. And and the Ryu Souls are, are nice little gimmicks for, for toys. They just are weird for storytelling. I need a haircut. Yeah, me too. Um... Yeah, I'm I'm over I'm I'm a little overdue now. It's it's getting down it's getting down there. I gotta gotta donate my ponytail. I'm also not quite sure what that whirlwind yeah, we missed that because was. We were discussing the twins. Sorry. Yeah, I there was I did not I there are just so many ways in which I just did not know what was happening. Um and I'm only on um, Also, the the treasure chest thing, I believe, was a was a Dark Souls reference. Oh, was it? I I think. Well, I don't know if that pops up in a bunch of other games, but I've heard that that happens in Dark Souls. I mean, to me, I I was thinking it was a mimic. Okay, so it is something that pops up a lot in in other places. It's a classic Dungeons and Dragons monster. Okay. Okay, yeah, because I'm I'm looking I'm looking things up and I'm seeing that it was actually called the Mimic Minosaur. So okay, so it is a classic Dungeons and Dragons monster. Yes, a Mimic is a classic Dungeons and Dragons mon monster which looks like a treasure chest, and is in fact trouble. But okay. it does not usually suck I you into so. an alternate dimension. Yeah, that's true. Usually, it just kind of comes to life and tries to eat you, but not in that way. Yeah. It's going to take bites out of you and. Yeah. And, and you will die. Yeah. Uh, but yes, mimic treasure chests are, they started in Dungeons and Dragons and can be found in many other um, games. So, yeah, I don't know if, uh, I want to see more of these object mi minosaurs and see how they operate yeah, in general. Yeah, this is a really different rule set. This one, like, are, mi are, are object minosaurs all going to, like, be non also humanoid in nature. If you are an object minosaur, if you make an object minosaur, right? Why do the Druidons not keep possession of the object? I mean, they 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 were guarding it. Uh, I mean, like put it in Weisel's pocket. I don't know. Hey, that's not food. Stop chewing on random things. That's not food! It's a little plastic doohickey that was oh, on the shirt. Oh, from, from a shirt collar. Yeah. Um, like I said, Amazon wardrobe. So, so I think we've probably picked this episode apart enough yeah. at this point. Yeah. Uh, I think it's well and truly, you know, it's, it's had enough. Now yeah. I'm feeling sad for the episode, which has the sadness of never making sense. Uh, it was it was a half decent focus for for Mel for Melto. Uh, it's just everything surrounding it was just relying on on a lack of logic, and it's kind of sad. I did like uh, the keyhole reveal at the end. I thought that, that was, was clever. Cool. That that w that was one thing that was, that I did think was clever, because um, it it actually fit with what Melto was figuring out, which was wait, there was a curve. But this was like a straight wall, and so it's like, oh, it's not just a dome; it is a treasure, a treasure chest, chest shape. 
uh, which which would make the most sense. Um, so that was that was the one one thing I thought was was clever and worked well, um, logic wise. So hopefully, uh, eventually, Rear Soldier will figure out what's its what's it doing? deal. Um, what are you doing? And hopefully, hopefully next week uh, we won't have to do the early morning thing again. Hopefully we'll, yeah, we'll be able to. Yeah, I hope to. our fan sub gets Because usually, usually it's available on Monday, but I'm assuming it was, I don't know, maybe they were busy, busy for Mother's Day. We were so sure it would be there on Monday that we set up the cameras yeah. And we got dressed. And then, and then I went to go. All ready to do it, and then it wasn't. I'm just so used to it being ready Monday morning, and then it wasn't. Um, and Tuesday we were a little bit more wary, so we just kept checking for it and checking for it. Yeah, until and it, it was, didn't turn up until pretty late at night. When yeah, in the evening. Um, I was. And I, I had to go do bed. tutoring. Was the was the thing. Yep. So yeah, uh, hopefully everything will will run a little smoother next week. That's always our hope. But uh, until then. Farewell, Farewell Ranger fans, fans, and let the power protect you. It's too late. The gazebo eats you. <laughs>